The pro-homosexual marriage ruling from U.S. District Judge Vaughn Walker is a work of moral suicide, a morally bankrupt decision from an economically bankrupt state. As you know by now, the uh, Proposition 8 in California, which defined marriage as between a man and a woman, was overruled by uh, uh, District Judge Vaughn Walker. This, this was uh, uh, pretty much expected. Very few people expected him to come to any other conclusion. It's a 138-page decision, uh, which meanders and goes through all sorts of uh, uh, tight-lipped uh, uh, arguments in order to try to justify something that uh, not only is immoral but irrational. And those, those two precepts uh, are found in this, in this decision, uh, the, the, the moral basis of, of homosexual marriage and the rational basis of homosexual marriage. But before I get to that, I want to cover a couple of things. I mentioned in my opening line that this was a work of moral suicide, a morally bankrupt decision from an economically bankrupt state. And what do I mean by that? Because I think you can follow, and I think you can see this in Scripture itself, uh, that you can, look at the, you can look at the currency of, of a nation and see what it does uh, to, uh, to, to its currency by debasing the currency, and you can see that something has happened before that, that um, moral bankruptcy has taken place, uh, which makes it easier to corrupt the currency. Uh, and it's something that's objective. You can see it. Prior to 1963, you had silver coins. Uh, after 1963, you had coins of, 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 of mixed metal, and today there is, uh, there is no precious metal in any of the coins. The same is true of, 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 a, of a dollar bill. Dollar bills used to represent held silver and held gold, and now they simply uh, are, are based upon the trust of the civil government. Everything has been fully debased. And Isaiah talks about this regarding Israel's judgment. You look at Isaiah chapter uh, 1, beginning with verse 18, it says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. They are, uh, though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. If you consent and obey, you will eat the best of the land. But if, re if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. Truly the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Then it goes on and it, it lays out uh, the indictment upon Israel and what brought about this judgment upon Israel. And there's some very interesting points here that I think reflect upon this, this immoral, uh, morally uh, retrograde uh, decision by this, by this judge. It says, How the faithful city has become a harlot, she who was full of justice, righteousness once lodged in her, but now murderers. Your silver has become dross, your drink diluted with water, your rulers are rebels and companions of thieves. Everyone loves a bribe and chases after rewards. They do not defend the orphan, nor does the widow's plea come before them. And so here you see, you can, you can demonstrate it in terms of ob objective points of interest. And the objective point of interest here is, uh, what have they done to the currency? What have they done to commodities? In this particular case, uh, silver uh, has become dross. They've They've, they've mixed base metals in with the silver, which we've done in our own society, and uh, they have diluted the wine with water. And so our, our moral precepts in our culture today, we, the reason this is a, a, a bankrupt decision from a, an economically bankrupt state is because there is no basis in order to determine what constitutes justice anymore. You have people in high places, you have elitists in high places who, who believe that they are the final determiners of what's right and what's wrong. And this is where we are in our society today. And of course, I know the homosexual community today is going to ob object vehemently to this. Now, they think that, they, that the, they, because they have a desire for homosexual marriage, that therefore that makes it right. And again, you will see in this particular decision that the judge brings up the moral issue. He says that the only basis for this decision was because of morality based upon, upon religion, and there is no rational basis to deny same-sex couples marriage. But before we get into some of those details, and I may not be able to get them in on this show, I want to go back uh, to an article that was written in 1993 by Senator Daniel Moynihan, he's a Democrat from New York, to emphasize 
this uh, the, losing our, our moral bearings in a society and coming up with these morally bankrupt decisions uh, from, Supreme Court, from district courts and eventually Supreme Court justices. Because keep in mind, you, have, you had seven million voters who voted uh, to define marriage as between a man and a woman. You had one judge who says that is invalid. Now uh, you're going to have, this is eventually going to go to the Supreme Court where you're going to have five unelected officials to defi define for us what constitutes marriage. And I'll get into more of that probably in a later program. And I think you can't, but you, but you can't argue this based upon what seven million people did. Uh, because if it went the other way and said that seven million people voted for same-sex marriage, we would object and say that there are more higher moral principles that define marriage for us. We have got to find a pusto, a place, a moral place to stand in order to make a decision about what defines marriage. And not only what defines marriage, but what defines everything. But Sen uh, Senator Moynihan, in 1993, published an article entitled Defining Deviancy, Deviancy Down. And Moynihan started from Emile Durkheim's proposition that there is a limit to the amount of deviant behavior any uh, community can afford to recognize. As, as the amount of deviancy increases, the community adjusts its standards so that conduct once thought deviant is no longer deemed so. Consequently, if we are not vigilant about, vigilant about enforcing them, our standards would be constantly devolving in order to normalize rampant deviancy. And so what you have here, of course, is, is that we keep lowering the bar of what constitutes deviancy. Um, now it's homosexual marriage, but this started a long time before that. Uh, and then what, what's, going to come ta what's going to take place in the future? One particular uh, uh, judge wrote on a simil similar case related to homosexual marriage, who can say that in 10, 15, or 20 years, an activist court might not conclude on the basis of a, a perceived evolution in community values that the laws prohibiting polygamous and incestuous marriages were no longer constitutionally justified. And so today it's homosexual marriage, but down the road it can be all, all, no, all number of things. Uh, in fact, uh, I went back and looked at a couple of court cases. Uh, I don't know if I can find these very quickly. Um, yeah, uh, there were court, court rulings in the 19th century uh, the Supreme Court ruled, uh, it concluded that bigamy and polygamy are crimes by the laws of all civilized and Christian countries. Look, there, there, was, no, there was no discussion about homosexuality. That was, that was something uh, that, that, that very, very few people were looking at as being, uh, uh, being a practice that was uh, morally acceptable. But the Supreme Court ruled that bigamy and polygamy are crimes by the laws of all civilized and Christian countries and that the spread and practice of polygamy is contrary to the spirit of Christianity and of the civilization which Christianity has produced in the Western world. Marriages were recognized in the United States as long as they were not contrary to the general view of Christendom. And as I will show, hope to show in the next, uh, next segment uh, of, of this show that if you, do, if you don't have a moral standard, if you don't have a place to stand in order to make moral decisions, then anything goes. And then what, uh, what is morally uh, uh, outside the, the, the pale today, 10, 10, 5, 10, 15, or 20 years from now, could be inside the pale. And so we have no idea where our nation is going to go with all of these. These judges have become a law unto themselves. They are formulating the basis of, of, of what constitutes law based upon a public pressure, based upon feelings, rather than on the basis of law. It's an unfortunate, however, that, the, that the, the courts of our day don't have a place to stand. They really have no idea where law uh, can be placed. They have no idea where justice can be evaluated. And the reason for this is because they have given up Every, every procedure of determining that law it must rest in the, in the nature and character of God. For more related to this topic, check out From Terror to Triumph, a 12-part video lecture series by Dr. Marshall Foster. 
You will find it at AmericanVision.com.